and welcome to this week's angling blog you join me on a damp dull overcast day on an upper reach of a river we've had quite a bit of rain recently um, the main river that you've seen me doing the piking is like chocolate um, and the canal is, is gin clear so something a bit different this week um, going silver fishing on the whip and hoping just to catch a few get a few bites um, most of the country's flooded um, or certainly you know in in tough conditions so hopefully today we'll catch a few roach and get a few bites and already mr robbins just found me so yeah let's get to it and have a look at my tactics for today right so tactics for today is going to be just dead simple whip down to a dino floats pinky caster float a size 18 whisk barb hook and I'm going to start off quite positive because it's quite coloured with two pound one ounce bay of pearl on if I need to go down to another hook length I will um, one question that gets asked a lot is how you attach your whip the line to the top of your whip so in this next little clip here I'll show you exactly how I attach my line to the whip so um, whip fishing one part people seem to struggle with a lot is attaching the line to the top of the pole the way you do it you have two pieces of silicon a small piece and a longer piece and you literally just thread your line through both of them that top bit is going to go with the line inside it over the top of the whip as I'll show you now so as you can see there that bit of silicon is over the pole with the line beneath it and you literally just wrap your line I do it nine times three four five six seven eight nine times and then your longer piece of silicon you then place over the complete tip of the rod right and there you go and as you say i leave it a bit longer so it doesn't tangle but I, i'm holding the other end of that rod then and pulling as tight as i can and look it's pulling the whole whip that isn't going anywhere there's no fish that is going to pull that off believe it or not there's no knot involved it's just the wrapping of the line around the top and two rubbers to keep it in place and that is going nowhere and that is simply how you attach your line to the top of a whip right so that's the the rig set up um, we'll have a quick look at the bait and have a look at the swim right so that's the swim for today as I say an upper reach of a river just got a tiny bit of pace on it tiny bit of flow and I'm going to be putting my maggots here this is going to be my killing zone anywhere towards the end of that line there I'm hoping that's where I'm going to get my bites it's got quite a bit of colour in it but hopefully it doesn't look like much but hopefully we'll get a few fish the bait tray for the day I've got hemp ground bait wetted down and white maggot there's a little tripod for recording a few bits and pieces that I use for my hook, hook length and of course the pink disgorger wouldn't go anywhere without it And like I always say with you fishing, that's the plan. That's my mindset to tackle this swim today. So you've always got to have a plan and a theory about what you're doing. There's no point just casting and, and hoping. There's times for that where you just want to have a laugh and a joke on a, on a commercial and have a bit of fun. Um, but most of the time with you fishing, you've got to have some type of method to your madness as such. There's got to be some type of theory behind what you're doing. And if you've got a theory behind it, then you can, and it works, then you can build on it next time. But that is my plan for today. Right, and here's that magical moment of any session. That first cast. Just flicking them, hooking there. Bit of maggots upstream. 
as you can see there's a bit of flow on it's taking it down today which is good the movement's always good and there we go that is the first fish of the day and we're 32 seconds into the blog maggot's good to go again so flick out hold it up like that and the key is not to get carried away so fish at this early stage will go mad because food's coming in and you don't want to overfeed them so hold him back and it goes through and that, I think there's going to be the killing zone there and there we go and a slightly better one And there we go, a cracking second fish of the day. And that movement on the water could be the key today. And I say it's quite clear, but we've got our baz with us doing a bit of fishing. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to introduce a tiny little amount of ground bait across this flow just there. I'll flick over the top. Pull it back and literally feed in probably two, three maggots just up from it. And you're creating that killing zone. The key is now is not to get carried away. You get a few bites because you'll have that initial reaction of the fish that food's going in. And you'll get quite a few bites and what you don't want in an hour's time is to be getting no bites as you can see the float just going down there in the top left um, what you don't want in an hour's time is to be getting no bites so you've got to judge how many bites you're getting the size of the fish that you're getting and you know how quick you're getting them to how you feed the swim you won't go too far wrong on a place like this with two or three maggots at a time because I would imagine they're getting it you know, if you're getting a bite every time down then at least one maggot's getting it so you can imagine there's at least three more fish eating one maggot down there and that's the way you've got to think about it but you don't want to be overfeeding them just holding it back let's say in that killing zone where I think most of the bites are going to come and there we go Right, so what you've seen there is initially how I go about feeding a swim. Um, the, tr the first couple of casts, you're putting in probably, you know, two to three maggots. On somewhere like this, it's a small venue. Um, you're trying to work out, one, how the fish want it on the day, and two, how much you're going to feed. And that's generally how I will approach most fishing, really. Um, on any river now don't get me wrong the bigger the river if i was going to d today that two to three maggots would probably be, would probably be five to six say to start off with and if they're having it you feed it accordingly but always start with an air of caution about it because even some of the busiest you know good stretches of river have their off day and they have the days where you can catch 20 pound of fish using half a pint of maggot you don't always have to pile it in but that is initially how I go about feeding the swim to start off with Feed. And we're into that killing zone again. And there we are, that's the fish. 
and the, the trick and the key to it is keeping them there and keeping the bites coming not feeding too much not feeding too little but just enough to keep them fish in that zone there we go a lovely little roach just coming on the whip just drip feeding them maggots in and these little guys now coming quite steady and they're all thin perfect and yeah pink disgorging obviously got to be done <laughs> simple as that and in, in the net he goes so yeah them type of fish are coming quite steady on that on that zone that I said where I wanted to keep them now the fish I've got the bites have got a little bit finicky so a bit of ground bait add a bit of colour and sometimes invest in the swim on places like this because you got to think that splashing it's only what three foot four foot deep that splashing is going to spook them so giving them a bit of a break or having two type of swims can work but yeah lovely little roach coming on the whip these little havens I guess are what are going to save the fish from the cormorants and stuff like that the nursery areas of the river and in the nursery areas you've always got I guess mum or dad and for this little waterway that's a nice little roach let's say you can only you know you can only measure it against the place you catch it from the, the, for here that's a lovely roach and I say feeding the swim steadily and the better fish eventually do move in and that is a lovely roach that and there's another nice roach beautiful fish And every day have those surprise fish that turn up. That's a nice little chublet. A big cake hole coming onto the maggots now as the, the swim's building. So it's been a, a fantastic you know few hours on the bank. Um I've had a kingfisher, I've been trying to get him going up and down, you know, robbing at the side of me. Um and plenty of bites. You know, they've not been massive fish, but there's been plenty of them. Plenty of them coming steady. Uh, as I say, I've got a few jobs to do this afternoon. So hopefully this blog, this blog has shown you, you know, how you can, you know, just getting a few bites is what fishing's about. And how to feed the swim. And I have literally been feeding two or three maggots like that still. Even towards the end of the session. Two or three maggots. And letting the flow run down like you've been seeing on the videos and holding it back in that kill zone so hopefully this video has shown you a little bit about you know how to feed a swim and how simple fishing can be let's have a look at that final net right there's the final net of fish um just weighed them just over 13 pound and a fantastic morning's fishing in just a few hours and as you can see lovely conditioned fish simple tactics simple rigs just practice and getting the feeding right thank you very much for watching tight lines in your own fishing and i'll catch you all next time